Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. And also, the Search for the Ancient Bobble Kickstarter has launched, so make sure you go check that out. The Kickstarter campaign will last for 30 days, and after that, the playmat will no longer be available for purchase. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core studio. Welcome to the show. Good morning, and welcome to yet another day of spoiler season for Modern Horizons 2. Yesterday, we got to see a lot of exciting things, including... As Moran Namar Ikad Istar Nikolda Gakar. I was close that time, okay? I was very close. Yeah, this was a strange and interesting commander from yesterday, and yeah, there's no mana cost on there, so make sure you check this episode out to see what this commander is all about. Also, make sure you check out my other episode yesterday on the dungeon mechanic and what it could possibly be. This is the first time we've ever seen the phrase venture into the dungeon on a card, so what exactly is that? And then on my final episode from yesterday, I talked about a new and exciting Boros Commander that's all about making golems and casting a lot of spells. But there's a reason why I'm up so early this morning, and it's because this morning has already started off with a really exciting spoiler. That's right, I woke up far too early and made the mistake of looking at my phone, looking at the newest spoilers, and then I saw Lannis, and oh my goodness. With my initial investigation, this might be my favorite Simic Commander, of all time. This is a spicy commander that's all about investigating and clues, and after seeing this, there's no way I could get back to sleep. So because of that, you're getting a super early episode, and I'm probably going to be drinking multiple cups of coffee today. But with all that said, let's jump into it. So, Lannis Cryptozoologist, because that's a term, is a 1-2 Snake Elf Scout that costs green-blue. It has, whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. So, if you don't remember what investigating is, well, basically, you create a colorless clue artifact token with pay 2, sacrifice this artifact, draw a card. And by tapping and sacrificing X clues, target opponent reveals the top X cards of their library. You may put a non-land permanent card with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield under your control. That player puts the rest of the bottom of their library in a random order. I am in love with this commander. Many players, including myself, have been waiting for a clue-based commander. And Lannis definitely does not disappoint. First off, this commander gives you a ton of support when it comes to making clues. There are plenty of ways in Simic to get a lot of non-token creature ETBs. Now, clues already have some support, but definitely with a clue-based commander, you would need them to also produce clues, so this is perfect. And then the way that you can utilize those clues is incredibly spicy. In exchange for sacrificing a decent amount of clues, you've got the potential to get something incredibly powerful off the top of your opponent's library. The more clues you sacrifice, the bigger that potential payoff. And keep in mind that you can do this at instant speed. Recently, I was critical of the design of Willow Dusk because it seemed like they just slapped on Activate only as a sorcery, which really hampers that commander. So I'm really glad they didn't do that here because, yeah, being able to activate this whenever you want has a lot of potential. And your opponents need to keep that in mind, and if they forget that, they can really pay for it. If someone swings at you with an important creature and they think that creature is safe, well, it might not be. With this commander untapped, you can tap, sacrifice some clues, and potentially get something bigger off the top of their or another opponent's library. And even just activating this right before your turn has a lot of potential as well. You might hit something unexpected and incredibly powerful off the top of an opponent's library, and because you didn't do this on your turn, your opponents don't have time to react quickly. Maybe they already put their resources into other things when they would have actually tried to remove it if they could have. So yeah, this commander has a ton of potential for some really exciting plays. But first up, let's talk about the other clue support that you have in Simic. Mm -hmm. 
Now, to be completely honest, there's a couple of clue cards that I forgot about before I went to make this episode, and I am really glad that they exist. Because cards like Ovenwald Mysteries, Ongoing Investigation, and Trail of Evidence can be fantastic for this deck. Ovenwald Mysteries says whenever a non-token creature you control dies, investigate. And on top of that, whenever you sacrifice a clue, create a 1-1 white human soldier creature token. So this helps us out a lot in two ways. First off, it has the potential to provide us with a lot of clues throughout the game. Our commander gives us clues when our non-token creatures come into play, and this gives us clues when they die. And on top of that, for every clue that we sacrifice, we're replacing them with 1-1 soldiers. With our commander's ability to sacrifice a ton of clues at once, we're going to be able to create an army in absolutely no time. This card just provides us an absurd amount of value in a lot of ways. And then another card that can provide us a lot of value throughout the game is Ongoing Investigation. It says whenever one or more creatures you control deal comedy to a player, investigate. On top of that, by paying one in a green, exile a creature card from your graveyard, investigate, you gain two life. So this has the potential to make us three clues in a turn by hitting each player. On top of that, it helps us get use out of the creatures that are in our graveyard by helping us exile them to make clues and gain life. And yet another fantastic clue enchantment for this deck is Trail of Evidence. It says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, investigate. An extra benefit like this to all of our instants and sorceries can really help us out throughout the game. And of course, if you're talking about clues, you've got to talk about Tireless Tracker. It has whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. And whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a plus plus one counter on Tireless Tracker. So yeah, we have green as one of our colors, so we're going to be ramping with lands a lot, so we're going to be making a lot of clues with this. And on top of that, Tireless Tracker is going to become monstrously big in absolutely no time when we sacrifice a lot of clues with our commander. So this can provide us a lot of value on top of being a huge threat. And then another creature that can help us out as well is Erdwald Illuminator. It says whenever you investigate for the first time each turn, investigate initial time. So whether it's our turn or an opponent's turn, if we've made a clue, we get one extra clue. Next up, let's talk about Tamiyo's Journal, which says at the beginning of your upkeep, investigate. And then tap, sacrifice three clues, search your library for a card, and put that card in your hand, then shuffle your library. This card is fantastic in this kind of a deck. First off, this gives us one clue on each of our turns, which is great. And secondly, it also lets us utilize those clues to tutor for whatever we want. Now, normally with this in a deck, you'd have to wait probably three turns to actually get use out of it. But with this deck, we can easily produce three clues in a turn and tutor for whatever we want to go get something that makes us even more clues. So yeah, this can be an incredibly powerful card in this deck. And finally, let's talk about Fleeting Memories, which says when enters the battlefield, investigate, and whenever you sacrifice a clue, target player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. Now, this one's only going to make us one clue, but it can still be very impactful in this kind of a deck. It says whenever you sacrifice a clue, target player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. Now, with the amount of clues that you're going to be sacrificing with this deck, you can mill someone out pretty quickly. It can also just really come in handy when it comes to actually figuring out what someone else has in their deck. If you're playing against players that you haven't played against before and you're not sure exactly what their decks are doing, well, then this can give you a hint. If you mill someone with this, you can see what cards hit their graveyard and then see what their deck's all about and if they have the potential to be a fantastic target for your commander. Now, unlike the previous clue cards, I'm not sure if this one's exactly a shoe in but it's definitely a consideration. But now let's move on and talk about some fantastic ways to make even more clues with our commander. And of course, the first card that came to mind when I saw this commander was Shrieking Drake. Shrieking Drake is a simple yet fantastic card. It's only a 1-1 flyer for a blue, but when it enters the battlefield, you return a creature you control to its owner's hand. Now, I'm sure originally this was designed to be a downside, but it's definitely a major upside for this kind of a commander. And because it doesn't say return another creature to your hand, well, you can just return the Shrieking Drake with its own trigger. So you cast this for a blue, your commander triggers, giving you a clue, and this bounces back to your hand. So with this in your hand, you can essentially pay one mana to make a clue. Over and over again. Yeah, that's pretty fantastic considering what your commander can do with clues. So you're going to want to include creatures like this one and Dreamstalker, which is a 1-5 illusion that essentially does the same thing, returning a permanent you control to its owner's hand when it comes into play. And again, because it doesn't say another permanent, it can bounce itself back. Another one to potentially consider is Trusted Advisor. It says your maximum hand size is increased by 2, which is nice, but it also says at the beginning of your upkeep, return a blue creature you control to its owner's hand. So if you want, you can just bounce the Trusted Advisor back to your hand because, again, it's just a blue mana, and then you play it again. And you should definitely be considering other creatures that return themselves or other things back to your hand. 
but you should also definitely be considering Blink cards, which are going to be fantastic in this deck. Ghostly Flicker is a great one that says, Exile two target artifacts, creatures, and or lands you control, then return those cards to the battlefield under your control. Essentially, for this deck's purposes, Blink two creatures, get two clues. And then Deadeye Navigator is, of course, a fantastic card just in its own right, but it's great in this deck as well. It has Soul Bond as long as it's paired with another creature. Each of those creatures has pay one in the blue. Exile this creature, then return to the battlefield under your control. Or again, for this deck's purposes, pay two mana, get a clue. And then, of course, a repeatable blink effect like Conjurer's Closet is great in this kind of a deck. It says at the beginning of your end step, you may exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. So essentially, this is just a free clue in whatever ETB our creature might have on each of our turns. Or, you know, we can just double up our clues and all of our other tokens with something like Second Harvest. It says for each token you control, create a token that's a copy of that permanent. So whether it's clues or soldier tokens, we're getting twice as many of those. And again, we can do this at instant speed to surprise our opponents out of nowhere. And of course, another card that you should be considering for this deck, though it's quite pricey, is Panharmonicon. It says if an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers initial time. Yeah, getting two clues instead of one from our commander is fantastic. And speaking of expensive cards, let's talk about some even more expensive cards with Parallel Lives, Doubling Season, and Primal Vigor. Essentially, in any deck that's looking to make tokens, yes, consider these if you've got oodles of money that you just want to throw at them. They double up your token production, so yes, that's good for a clue deck. Now, another thing you want to be considering, though, are cards like Submerge, Expel from Raska, and Commit to Memory. Submerge is an instant that says if an opponent controls a forest and you control an island, you may cast a spell without paying its mana cost, and it says put target creature on top of its owner's library. So first off, when playing a game of Commander, chances are probably really high that one of your opponents has at least one forest because again, green is a very popular color in the color of ramp, so yeah, they're probably gonna have a forest. And because of that, a lot of the time you're gonna be able to cast this just for free. And being able to put a creature on top of its owner's library is huge for this kind of a deck. Again, you can put your opponent's best creature on top of their library and you know exactly what their CMC is gonna be. So you sacrifice that many clues, and then congratulations, you can get that off the top of their library and steal it with your commander. And keep in mind that your commander can get you things other than creatures, so something like Expel from Rosk can be fantastic as well. It has Ascend, and it says return target non lane permanent to its owner's hand. If you have the city's blessing, you may put that permanent on top of its owner's library instead. With the amount of clue tokens you're going to be making, yeah, getting Ascend is going to be no problem at all. So pick and choose whatever non-land permanent you want and put it on top of an opponent's library and then steal it with your commander. So of course a more flexible spell like Commit to Memory can be fantastic too. Commit says put target spell or non-land permanent into its owner's library second from the top. So if someone's got something powerful in play or if they've just cast it and you want it, well congratulations, it's gonna be yours. And speaking of stealing things, let's talk about cards like Acquire. Acquire says search target opponent's library for an artifact card and put that card into play under your control, then that player shovels their library. Now, of course, this can just be a fantastic way to steal a powerful artifact out of an opponent's library and get it for yourself. But what this also provides you with, which is important for this deck, is information. Again, like I mentioned earlier, if you haven't played against an opponent's deck, you might not know what kinds of cards they have in it. So by playing a card like this, you get to see their entire library and you know what kind of potential you have when it comes to targeting them with your commander. If they've got a ton of powerful permanents in their deck, yeah, they can be a really good target and you're going to have a better idea as to the number of clues that you should be sacrificing. And if they don't have powerful permanents in their deck, well, then just target someone else and steal their things. Again, this card helps you out in multiple ways and information is key for a deck like this. Now, Lannis is a fantastic commander that I am really excited about, but of course it can be a fantastic card in the 99 as well in a deck like Tulane, Teller of Tales. Tulane is a 2-4 human druid for 2 green, white, blue, and it has vigilance, and it says whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card, then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. On top of that, by paying 3 and tapping it, return target creature you control to its owner's hand. Tulane is all about casting a ton of creatures and having a lot of creatures come into play. And it especially loves creatures like Shrieking Drake, so yeah, Lannis can provide you a lot of clues in this kind of a deck, and then you can utilize Lannis to steal your opponent's things. Another commander that is all about ETBs is Yarrick the Desecrated. Yarrick is a 3-5 death-touching lifelink elemental horror that costs 2 black, green, blue. It says if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers initial time. So this is basically a Panharmonicon commander. So you're going to have a lot of creatures with a lot of ETBs, and then you're going to be able to double up Lannis' ETB trigger as well. And even a commander like Amber the Lusserous might want to be considering Lannis as well. 
Amrith is a 6-6 flying dragon that costs 3 green, white, blue. It has whenever another permanent enters the battlefield on your control, look at the top card of your library. If it shares a card type with that permanent, you may reveal that card and put it in your hand. So if you've got a creature-focused Amrith deck, or especially an artifact creature Amrith deck, this can come in really handy. Amrith already provides you value when things come into play, and if those things are creatures, Lannis will provide you value too. And again, with Lannis makes you a clue, that's going to trigger Amrith as well. So if you've got an artifact on top of your library, well, it's coming into your hand. And again, if that's an artifact creature, even better. And the final commander that I'm going to bring up that might want to consider Lannis might surprise you, but it is Morophon the Boundless. And the reason it might surprise you is that Morophon is typically a tribal commander. Morphon is a 6-6 shapeshifter with changeling that costs 7. When Morphon comes into play, you choose a creature type and then spells the chosen type you cast costs Wooburg less to cast. This effect reduces only the amount of colored mana you pay. On top of that, other creatures you control of each chosen type get plus almost one. Now, though if you do choose one of Lannis' creature types, yes, you can cast it for free, but Lannis really doesn't help with tribal synergies. Now, the reason I bring Morophon up, though, is because of my most recent Mad Lad deck. Now, I'm not going to spoil exactly what that deck does in case you want to watch that episode, but let's just say that Shrieking Drake and cards like it are a big part of it. So yeah, that deck loves getting a ton of creature ETBs, and Lannis loves creatures coming into play as well. So let's just say with Lannis in this deck, well, you could just make enough clues to essentially, you know, tap and activate, sacrifice as many clues as you need to to just look through someone's entire deck and take whatever you want. So yeah, I think that specific Morophon build should be considering it. But now it's time for me to wrap things up and give you my final thoughts on Lannis Cryptozoologist. And actually, can I just say again that I've read the name again? I still can't get over cryptozoologist. That's just an interesting term. I know it's not referring to cryptocurrency, but that's all I can think of, which is just really funny to think about. This zoologist is all about animals and Bitcoin. <clears throat> okay, back on track. Anyways, I am absolutely in love with Lannis. The design of this investigate clue commander is just fantastic. It not only gives you a way to generate clues which is needed, but it gives you a fantastic way to use them. In my opinion, this is truly the clue commander that we have all been waiting for. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.